was a fluke that I even saw the x-rays in the first place. Somebody made a mistake, sent them to the ER when they should have been gone to the OR when Earl Bragg was sent up there. So by that time, you'd identified the patient in question. Yes, Earl Bragg. came in with his ID when the ambulance brought him in. We didn't know who he was, what he was doing, what he was carrying, or what was about to happen. At what point did you become aware that Mr. Bragg was a threat? When I saw the x-rays, I could tell that there was something wrong. Nurse Johnson, who was our head nurse, she got a call. I got on the line. They explained to me that Earl Bragg was potentially carrying your classified material, so that's what the I record, knew. Dr. Drake, none of this can be laid at the FBI's door. This is an Equinox screw-up. We are strictly a janitorial service cleaning up their mess. Are you, are you kidding me? This is a mess to you guys? Why don't you try calling it a disaster or maybe a death trap? Well, why don't you try admitting that this tragedy should have and could have been prevented? Hey, hey. I didn't expect to see you back here again. Yeah, do you have Mr. Jasko's chart? Thank you. You know, there are other doctors, like your brother. And we could be looking at vertebral basilar ischemia, so that's a pretty tough diagnosis. And you don't think he's up for it? I think he has the tools to be a good surgeon, yes. He certainly inherited the ego. Okay, since Emma was born and I've taken on this domestic lifestyle, Matt has taken the opportunity to try and one-up his big brother. Every time I live, he rushes in to, to take the big cases. Hmm. wonder where he got this competitive thing from. This competitive thing can be a good thing. It can make you a better surgeon unless you are careless, which, of course, I've never made that mistake. Of course. Ever. Of course. Yes, but I've seen it done. I've seen it happen. So in between running home to help your wife and the baby and the move and all this stuff, you're here to make sure your brother doesn't get in over his head? I'm here to do my job, Elizabeth. Oh. Well, your secret is safe with me. Thank you. Also, um, I wanted to talk to you about Robin. I, I can understand why you're so concerned. Because she's struggling with everything. Yeah. And, and thank you for watching Emma and helping her get the place together. And yeah, so. sure. But I, I think I overstepped. No. No, it was uh, very gracious of you. And a little insensitive. I should have thought about how it would affect her. Uh, it's just, she should have never taken that tone with you, to be honest okay. with you. It's okay. I understand exactly where she's coming from. She's not mad at you. You know that, right? She's, she's mad at me. You know, don't get me wrong. Robin's doing better. She's, she's doing a lot better. And not long ago, she would have bit my head off for coming home twice in one day. She would accuse me of checking up on her and that I didn't trust her being alone with Emma. It sounds like she's turned a corner. Yeah. Actually, I have Matt to thank for that. He came over yesterday and he was throwing some lame pickup lines at Maxie and Robin and I actually thought it was hilarious. And, you know, come to think of it, I haven't seen her smile like that in a while. And it was by the time I, I left, you know, we were in a good place. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. You know, I don't know, maybe I have been too hard on her. Maybe this is all just normal reaction, you know, having the baby and moving, those are two of the biggest things you can do in your life, mm -hmm. and she's, she's doing them, you know, right on top of each other. Along with the life and death decisions that come along with her job. Yes, but it's still no excuse for the way she was talking to you. No, that's, that's okay. It was a stress talking. I'm not going to take it personally. That's what I learned when Lucky was going through his addiction. He would say things that hurt me, and I realized that it wasn't really about me. It was about him and the pain he was going through. So... You know, anytime you need anything, just don't hesitate to ask. I mean it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Lucky. How would you feel about getting out of here? So the show has been sold out for weeks, and see, one of the guys at the station, he's got four tickets, but something came up, and he's trying to sell them, and I just... How would you like to take the boys to see it? Oh, my God, they would love it. I know. But I have to work. But it's Disney on ice. Every time this commercial comes on, the boys go crazy. I know, crazy. I know, I know, I know. Okay, let me see if I can get someone to sub for me, and I'll let you know. <laughs> Listen, can you uh, file Jasko charges? Yeah. Do you even know if there's going to be a show tonight? I mean, they were saying that this is the worst blizzard in years. I know, but it's not supposed to hit till tomorrow night, maybe even first thing tomorrow morning. And this blizzard of the century, I think, is a bunch of hype for TV ratings. So I called to confirm, and this show is definitely going to happen. This is really sweet of you. Well, I know you like figure skating, and, well, that's the least I can do after kicking your butt on Cameron's video game, and... Oh, my God, you still haven't realized that I let you win? That's two out of three any time. I just felt so bad for you because you made such a mess of your taxes. <laughs> mm. 
Hey, sweetheart, it's me, your loving husband. You're probably feeding Emma or changing her. Maybe you guys are both taking a nap, in which case I'm extremely jealous. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be out of here pretty soon, so I'm going to rush home and help you unpack the rest of those boxes, all right? So I'll see you in a bit. I love you. Bye. Hey, what happened at Disney on Ice with Lucky and the boys? Oh, I really wanted to go, but the weather service is saying the blizzard is coming sooner than Lucky yeah. thinks. A lot of snow and high winds. There's so. always fools out driving, and I'm sure we'll have our share tonight. Yes, we will. Epiphany wants all hands on deck in the ER. Hey, if you want to take off, I'll cover for you. Pretend you didn't see the memo. Yeah, that's nice of you. And I did think about it. But then I figured it would be worse to get the boys' hopes up and then have to cancel, so we'll just go another time. Right. We'll batten down the hatches. It's gonna be a long night. Well, somebody's cheerful today. Good service, huh? Oh, written all over your face. And if I'd have to guess, I'd say it has something to do with a man. So Sonny Corinth was opening up this pediatric head trauma foundation that puts a lot of pressure on you. How so? It's going to be monitoring you like a hawk, watching where every cent of his startup money is spent. I don't mind a little hovering. Sonny and Carly are trying to turn their son's tragedy into a positive, and I appreciate them asking me to be a part of it. That includes a little hand-holding and explanations every once in a while. I can live with that. Magnanimous. Thank you. A little pompous, maybe. Did that sound pompous to you, nurse? Oh, first world nurse, and you never tell doctor how he sounds. Wow, really doubly insulting. But with so much love. Yeah. Now we have to go see Mr. Langs. He was moved to East Wing last night. All right, let's do it. Well, I sure hope I'm in a position to help you. That makes two of us. Well, I suppose we should start with introductions. I'm Dr. Matt Hunter. Rebecca Shaw. Lovely. Mm -hmm. How can I help you? Um, looking for administration. That's terrific. Excuse me? Well, I suppose that means you're going to be working here. If I'm hired, yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you do? X-ray tech. X-ray tech. We definitely, we're in desperate need of X-ray technicians. Uh, do you need a reference? You don't even know me. Uh, I'm looking to rectify that. Are you flirting with me, Dr. Hunter? Ah, call me inspired. Well, before I lose my head and succumb, where's administration? Administration, yes. right. Administration. Down the hall, third door on the left. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'll see you soon. Hey, I've uh, got a patient I want you to take a look at. Yeah. Hey. Right. Yeah. Is everything okay? Yeah. No? Uh, yes. Some days I just love my job. Well, I'm afraid to ask. Well, I just met a girl almost as beautiful as Elizabeth. Who's that? You caught me. Doing what exactly? No, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. That's fine. I, I do. It's just one thing I've learned around here is how much you hate it when we bring our personal lives to work. Didn't I just ask? Yes, you did. What do you think? Oh, well, he looks kind of tall, dark, and handsome to me. <laughs> it's my fiance. Fiance? Yeah. Girl, still waters do run deep. When did this happen? The engagement? Last night. A few months ago, I finally cracked back down and I let my mother introduce me to one of her perfect Iranian professionals, just to keep the peace, you know? Imagine my surprise when I finally came face to face with the man of my dreams. We've been together ever since. Now I know. Love at first sight really does exist. Well, I'll give you this. You can definitely keep a secret. That's a rare talent around here. Yeah, I, I guess I just didn't want to jinx myself, you know? But now that we're getting married, I know nothing ever will. 